This video reviews the basics of how flow cytometry works. What we have here is a flow cytometer on the left. This one is called a BD fax caliber. And you can see that it's attached to a computer. And the computer has a program that will allow us to visualize as the cells are running through the machine and how the cells fluoresce. Here's the flow cytometer. And there's a cover on the flow cytometer that you can open. Inside the flow cytometer, there's a laser. And that laser is going to interrogate the cells. The sample of cells is put on the sample uptake port. And then the cells will flow by the laser. Now there are a variety of detectors in the machine and filters that are going to gather all of the information that is revealed from the laser passing through or hitting the cells. Here we're looking at the computer program that accompanies the flow cytometer. And as you can see, there are several different black windows. We'll get to those in a second. That's where the data is going to be displayed. There are also a bunch of different gray windows that surround it. And those are all the controls for the machine. Now this first window allows us to look at forward scatter on the x-axis and side scatter on the y-axis. That allows us to visualize the size of the cells versus the complexity of the cells. The second windows are two different histograms. These histograms are going to show in real time if the cells are positive for the fluorescence that we're looking for. And in this case, the top histogram is going to look for CD4. We're using antibodies that recognize CD4, and those antibodies are conjugated to the fluorochrome FITSI, which fluoresces green. The bottom histogram allows us to visualize B220, which is a marker that's found on B cells. And in this case, we're using antibodies that recognize B220 and are conjugated to the fluorochrome PE, which fluoresces red. The final window allows us to visualize both B220 and CD4 on the same chart, and this is known as a dot plot. Instead of just graphing one variable, we're graphing two variables. The B cells, visualized by being B220 positive, are going to be found on the x-axis, whereas the T cells, which we'll be able to see because they're CD4 positive in this case, are going to be visualized on the y-axis. Now there are four different sections of this dot plot. The lower left is going to show us cells that are negative for B220 and negative for CD4. The lower right is going to show us cells that are positive for B220 but negative for CD4. The upper left is going to show us cells that are negative for B220 but positive for CD4. And the upper right is going to show us cells that are positive for B220 and positive for CD4. So we can use a dot plot like this to compare more than one variable at the same time. One variable on the x-axis and one variable on the right axis. Now it's time to put our sample on the machine. Our sample is composed of cells. And in our sample we have B cells and T cells. We've added antibodies to this sample. The B cells are stained with B220PE, and the T cells are stained with antibodies against CD4, and they're FITSI labeled. So we come over to the machine, we turn off our setup button, and we hit Acquire. And as soon as we hit Acquire, the cells start showing up on our screen. And they're showing up in real time. So 1,000 cells are shown on the screen at a time, and we can see them appear individually as they pass by that laser. If we look at our histograms, we can start to see which cells are positive and which cells are negative for CD4 in the top histogram, or B220 on the bottom histogram. And we can also look at our 2D dot plot to see which of those cells are B220 positive, CD4 positive, or positive for both cell markers. At this point, I pulled up the counter so we can see how many cells have gone through the machine. 
and we're just about at 50,000 cells that have passed through past the laser. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to save our results. At this point it saves all of the cells and we can see all the cells that have gone through the machine. Now if I restart the program, we can see from the very beginning that as the cells pass through the laser, we can see those histograms growing. And it's very clear to see if we look at the top histogram that the majority of our cells are not positive for CD4. The majority of the cells are positive for B220, which is shown in the bottom histogram. All right, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to save this file and it's going to show us all of the cell data that's been collected. Now at this point what we can do is we can actually get statistics. So I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to put a marker surrounding the positive cells for CD4. If I look down at the histogram statistics for M1, the marker, it shows that 3.42% of the cells are positive for CD4. So about 3.5% of the cells in my sample are CD4 T cells. I'm going to do the same thing for our B cells. Here's that marker that shows the cells that are positive for B220. And when I look at my histogram statistics, I can see that for marker 1, M1, 96.93% of cells are positive for B220. So about 94% of the cells are B220 positive. Now we can see that represented as well when we look at our 2D dot plot. But this allows us to see if any of the cells are positive for both. There are four different quadrants on this plot. Lower left, lower right, upper left, and upper right. And we can get quadrant statistics as well to tell us the proportion of cells that are found in each of those quadrants. And here they are. If we zoom in, we can see that in the upper left quadrant, there's 3.05% of the total cells. There's 0.36% of the total cells in the upper right quadrant. There's 0.02% of cells in the lower left quadrant. And there's 96.56% of the cells in the lower right quadrant. Well, let's think about what that means. The upper left quadrant shows us cells that are positive for CD4, but negative for B220. So we're looking at T cells here. The upper right quadrant shows us cells that are positive for CD4 and positive for B220. So these are cells that express both T cell and B cell markers. The lower left quadrant shows us cells that are negative for CD4 and negative for B220 meaning they're not T cells, nor are they B cells. And the lower right quadrant shows us cells that are positive for B220, but negative for CD4, meaning that they're B cells, but they're not T cells. So looking at this overall, we see that the great majority of cells, about 97% of the cells, are B cells. About 3% of the cells are T cells that express CD4. And there's very few cells that are positive for both or negative for both in our sample. Taken together, flow cytometry is a very powerful way to analyze cell samples. We treat the cells with fluorescent antibodies that recognize a specific cell marker. In one sample, we can add several different fluorescent antibodies that each recognize a different cell surface marker. As the cells and their attached antibodies pass through the laser, the laser excites the fluorescent dye and it emits light. The detectors within the machine detect which fluorescence was present, and it records it for us to see on the screen. In our case, this allows us to determine the percentage of CD4 T cells versus B cells that we have in our sample. It also allows us to see if any cells are positive for both markers.